Jiro here from Ember Games with a review of Trek to Yomi, developed by Flying Wild Hog and published by Devolver Digital. The game was released May 5th, 2022, digitally across most platforms, and Special Reserve Games has limited physical copies available for PlayStation 5. I played it on an Xbox Series X on Game Pass for the review. As you can probably instantly tell with Trek to Yomi, the game is very much about style, taking hints from old samurai cinema. The black and white, the camera angles, the scenery, and the art style just all pull together this very unique look that honestly screenshots don't do justice. Trek to Yomi, well first, Yomi, if you're not familiar, is the Japanese World of the Dead, or World of Darkness. You play as Hiroki, a samurai charged with standing by the village leader Aoki's side, protecting it from invasion and bandits. Well, as you can tell by the title of the game, things don't go quite right, and thus Hiroki begins a journey to and through Yomi. The game is played from roving overhead and side views with fixed cameras. When you engage in combat, it's always locked on a 2D plane. Enemies will approach from left and right, and you press the A button to manually change which direction you're facing. You have a light attack with X and a heavy attack with Y. You can roll and sprint with B. You start out with only the most basic of combos, but learn more by defeating required enemies on your path, entering certain rooms, and witnessing specific events. More on that in a second. You can block by holding the left shoulder button, and every hit you defend against you'll lose stamina, but not health. If your stamina completely depletes, you'll go into tired mode until the bar completely recharges. Stamina is also depleted by continuous attacks. Now if you time your block right, you can do a parry, throwing most enemies off balance for a second, and there's a parry combo that lets you do an immediate counterattack. The move and combos you can open up become very helpful, like a parry that lets you slip behind an enemy and attack them on the way as you pass, a thrust with some reach and a follow-up swing, and one that really made me a beast in combat was the holding up plus XXY combo, which ends in a stunning neck thrust. When enemies are in a stunned state, they can be executed with the right shoulder button. This finishes them immediately, obviously, but also restores your health. The biggest challenge to this is several enemies die before you can get through the stun part of a combo. You have a dodge roll with B, during which you get a few frames of invincibility, and if you hold down the B button, you'll do the sprint I talked about. There are also some combos tied in with these. You can sprint outside of combat in the exploration mode by holding down the B button as well, and this does not deplete stamina. Hiroki also learns various ranged attacks as he progresses, including kunai and a bow and arrow. You start with a relatively small maximum capacity, but can be upgraded through collectibles. You can switch between them using directions on the D-pad. You replenish your current supplies by finding objects in the environment. Enemies come in a few varieties, but aside from a couple different archetypes, you can handle them all with pretty much the same tactics. As mentioned, that up XXY combo could take up just about anything very quickly since it instigated the finishing move. You have a lot of basic enemy types, uh, some armored ones and a couple ranged ones. I did find some of the boss battles a little frustrating at first, as they can initially seem impossible to take down, but as you learn their patterns and attacks, they become more manageable. There are several checkpoints as you progress through the game's seven chapters, and these are shrines with glowing light emanating from within. You can touch these for full life and stamina fill up once, and if you die, you'll return to the last one you touched. Anything you've picked up since the checkpoint will still be in your inventory, so you don't have to take that path again and find it. Things like the combos I mentioned before, uh, of course there is a set of collectibles that provide no value other than world flavor text and history. There are also max health and max stamina upgrades. Each ranged weapon has its own set of collectible capacity increases as well. Collectibles will have a faint twinkling, but due to the black and white and often zoomed out range of the camera, a lot of times it's hard to tell what you're grabbing until you look in the upper right and see your ammo is maxed because you just tried to pick up ammo, or press up to view your new collectible. These things are all found in the non-combat locked areas called the exploration mode I briefly mentioned. It's a good idea to try to find every room an optional path, even though you may not know what's optional, and drop off from something from which you can't return. I do have to admit it's a pet peeve of mine when locked camera angle games have quote, hidden areas that are hidden just because the camera doesn't point that direction for you to see. Yomi has a few more difficulties aside from that because sometimes you can kick open doors, sometimes you can go through windows, but not always. So if you're trying to find everything, you'll spend a lot of time looking like an idiot as you walk around borders of every room. I finish most chapters missing one collectible each. The story honestly doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Hiroki blames himself for some events that I don't really understand how he could have changed had he done things differently, but it is entertaining nonetheless. There are choices throughout the game that set you down the path for what I assume is three different endings. Graphically, as I said, the game is a constant treat, and sometimes when combat got a bit monotonous or tedious, just pushing on to see the next environment, the next piece of scenery, was good enough motivation. The game does have a film grain on top of it, which does help a lot of the scenes compensate for some frame rate drops, especially when there are a lot of 3D models and the camera angle is turning and panning. Some places are worse than others, but 
I don't remember too many within combat itself, just during exploration. I would say the game is close to the right length it needs to be. It did feel like chapters 5 and 6 kind of went on a little longer than they needed to with some filler, but as mentioned, it was pretty all the way. Overall, Trek to Yomi has great style, tons of combos to find, even though combat can get a little monotonous with the amount of encounters and lack of strategy needed to conquer them. A story that's entertaining, multiple endings, not always obvious what paths you can take with the fixed camera, but the game is just beautiful graphically and musically, even with a few frame rate drops here and there. Rated as a stage-based action-adventure game, Trek to Yomi hits a 69 out of 100 on my true 0 to 100 scale, where 50 would be an average game. This is Jiro from Games. Thanks for watching.